Good morning, and my name is Eugenio Culorcello, and welcome to the Spring 2013 version of the class Artificial and Robotic Vision. It will be an exciting semester, and we will learn a lot of things about artificial vision, in particular related to uh, bio-inspired vision systems and neural network. I hope you will all have a great time in this course and you will be able to learn a lot of things. Uh, don't forget that help is always available. You can email me or my group or any of our collaborators worldwide and uh, seek for answers. And um, we will always try to be there for you and to help you in every step of the way. So, I will start today by introducing um, our course, Artificial and Robotic Vision System. Again, this is Spring uh, 2013 version. And um, I hope that to make this uh, course and lectures available worldwide so that anybody can enjoy them and use them. So we will start with, uh, with a few slides and I will introduce you the class and the main objectives. First of all, this is lecture one and it's an introduction to the course. The main purpose of this course really is uh, to uh, create uh, engineer a system that can give robots vision. Uh, sometimes I call this uh, this project, which is really a research project. Uh, none of the things that uh, we're going to talk in this class are out commercial in any way, really, yet. Um, I usually refer to this project as the eye of the Terminator. So here you see the eye of a robot. So what we really want to to get out of this is um, some kind of a pocket size device that um, is able to uh, basically a pocket size device which is about the size of your cell phone and uh, probably has the same capability of vision that you have and we'll see that in a minute so I also believe deeply that um, robotic system, uh, one of the main problem of robots nowadays, one of the main reason why we really don't have a robot around us that can help us in a everyday activity, is exactly the fact that they are not able to perceive their environment, they are not able to see the world the way we see it and make decisions based on what they see. For this reason, I think um, robot, there's a lot of that we have to do and learn in robotic vision systems uh, to try to improve them and make them almost as good as our own visual system, which is maybe one of the best in the known universe right now. There are other problems to robots besides um, you know, their inability to perceive the environment. I mean, one of them is artificial muscle, as you can see from this slide, uh, which are, you know, there's, there's a main difference between mechanical actuators nowadays and uh, their power consumption uh, and, you know, physical actuators that are much more efficient. And uh, although mechanical actuators um, allow you for a greater variety of movement, I don't think this is a limitation. Right now we have nice robots that can wheel around in a room um, and even if they're on wheels and even if they don't have much mobility, maybe they have a simple arm, we have them. They are available. The reason why we cannot use them is because they are unable to perceive the environment and they're not safe for humans around them. Another big problem of robots is batteries. Now, of course, you want the robots to run for a long time and motion in space requires a lot of battery juice, current energy, in particular power, that's for sure. Um, <coughs> but that's not really one of the main problem of, uh, of robots, I, I would think. I think it's a secondary problem. 
So what is the impact and why do we care m so much about robotic vision? Well, that's because we really would like to have a robot that can help us in, in everyday activity. We would like to have a robot uh, like uh, this one in this picture that is a healthcare robot that can guide elderly patient or patient that have some kind of a mental disability uh, to, to do their daily activities. Um, we would also like, uh, you know, sim basically very simple robotic helpers that uh, are able to help you in, in basically every kind of a day, every, everyday activity. If you think about what is the status of robotic in the house right now, it's, I think, pretty sad in a way. Maybe not sad is the bad word, but at least it's satisfactory for sure. We really don't have a robot that can help us in a good everyday activity, like, for example, you know, find my keys, I lost them, or, uh, you know, f clean up the house, put, put away all the children's toys. We really don't have such a thing, um, let alone having a robot that could cook us dinner, make even just make a sandwich. I think, you know, right, right now, uh, the basic example of a robot in the house is a Roomba, which is a vacuum cleaner or a floor cleaner. Um, and that's great, but this robot doesn't really have a lot of brain. And uh, of course, it can clean the floor in some spe special cases and it can help us a little bit, but we, we really want more. We have the technology nowadays that we should, we should have more from robots. And that's really what the goal of this course and this research is all about. It's really giving robots the vision that they need uh, to perform complex and complex tasks on everyday activities at home. Um, of course, you know, having some kind of a artificial vision system that is as small as a cell phone, you know, this little high of the Terminator, as I call it for fun, it's not just about robots, but it could help in um, a variety of situations. For example, it could enable, um, you know, uh, devices that we use currently use every day, like a fridge, to know who the user is, recognize them, and uh, select a little bit, give him some information. For example, uh, I know that uh, you're Jane, and you usually drink milk at 9 a.m. And unfortunately, I wanted to remind you that there's just very little milk left. Or um, we only have two apples left. I know you like them in the morning. Might seem silly, but such a thing would really help you if we could, for example, send you grocery list to your phone or other things. Um, of course, what we really want is, uh, is a smart home, a smart system. They can recognize you, you know, adjust the temperature based on who, who is in the house. Uh, I like it warm, uh, my wife might like it cold or vice versa. My son maybe don't, doesn't want AC, he prefers to have the windows open. I mean, just the silly things, but they are quite important uh, in order to, to save money and um, be more environmentally friendly. Also control who's in the house, turn on devices uh, and so forth might seem like sci -fi science fiction, but this is really uh, behind the corner. We have all the technology for this. We just haven't put it together, and one of the missing components is really recognizing who's in the environment again. Uh, there are more you know, sophisticated things, that, and um, you might remember minority, the movie Minority Reporters, some kind of a spider, a sentinel robot that goes around and finds things. Uh, you know, that might be really far off, but um, the military and a lot of other people would be quite interested in monitoring devices that could infiltrate um, in hostile environment and collect information. And it doesn't have to be an hostile environment, you know, it could be a dangerous environment like a cave or a, um, a digging mine or anything that, you know, or for example, the Fukushima um, power plant disaster, this nuclear plant where humans are not really allowed to be in anymore. And it would be really great to have a robot that could go in there and, um, you know, and basically report what they see, report what the problems are, maybe actuate some things. 
So these are just a few examples of why robot vision is, is important and is needed. Other one is, for example, the Google goggles recently uh, developed by Google, uh, these glasses that could give you virtual reality information, ex you know, augmented reality. And if they could see what you're seeing, besides having a location, um, they would be able to really interpret the environment, give you more interesting information. And you can think about a lot of these things. In fact, I really recommend that all of you taking these courses online or listening to this talk to think about these things. And these are very important topics, how you know you, robots with a good vision can be used to improve um, the world. And I really recommend you to think about these things throughout the course and later if you're interested in this kind of research because it's a very important topic and it's going to be a very large, very, very large market. Um, so with that, um, I think I summarized more or less uh, what the key topics are in uh, robotic vision and um, I'll see you in next class.